Hello Scorpio and welcome to the first of two readings this month in May because uh, we're going to be playing with the energies. Well, not playing with them. We're going to be applying the astro flower uh, and the elements and all the qualities and the mechanics of the astro flower into your monthly reading. So in the future, we will be doing monthly readings according to star signs. So when we're in Gemini, you will get the influence from Gemini and all the elements that go along with it. So without further ado, let's just jump in and have a look at the energies that are in the sign of Scorpio. Here we have in front of us here, you have the uh, Scorpio sign, uh, the astro flower here. First thing you'll notice is the squares which are fixed, the triangles which is cardinal, and the uh, circles which are mutable energies. So Scorpio is made up of two elements. You've got water on your surface and air at your base. Uh, most signs have that. There's only four pure signs, and that is uh, Pisces, Aries, Virgo, and Libra, all within those respective elements of water, fire, earth, and air. The rest of the signs are made up of two types of elements, and the best sign, or the most, uh, the sign that's the easiest to explain this is through, for example, Capricorn. Capricorn is half goat, half fish. It is half, it is two thirds earth, one third water at its base. Same situation for Scorpio, two thirds water, one third air uh, at its base. Here you have on your sort of financial side, as it were, your, uh, your engagement with the physical world. And this side here is your relationship side here. Yeah. One thing you'll notice is the sign that is next to you, which is Libra. Now, that's that pure cardinal air sign. So you have this air that runs up through you, uh, right through the center of you. So you have a lot, you think a lot, a lot, basically, uh, um, Scorpio. And it's very directional. You get very, it gives you a real definition about what you're thinking and where you're going, uh, basically. Um, that gives you that runs through on your relationship side, but also you like it to um, produce results on your material side of life, being very sort of consistency, because within you, you have mutable energies that is on your financial side and mainly cardinal stuff, which is on your relationship side. So you are very emotionally engaged with your relationships that are around you. Um, here you have a uh, sort of uh, cancer coming in with your cardinal earth and cardinal water, which combines with that cardinal air that comes through from um, Libra. On your base, this is where we often get this situation going on. On your relationship side, you have fixed water and fixed air. The fixed air is from yourself and the fixed water is from Aquarius. Um, so that's your interconnection with the universe that is around you. It's mutable fire and then air comes in from Sagittarius, which is just next to you, uh, the following sign on, on, in, in astrology. So you have this sort of mutable uh, sort of fire and this air at the base. So you have quite a lot of air within you. But you also have this mutable earth that comes in from Virgo. Um, and that keeps you on your uh, work side, helps you to be um, flexible in what you do in order to get the results that you want. And the results, the reason you've got to be flexible in within you is to get your connection in a very fixed way. So you've got that fixed earth that comes in from Leo, uh, which is down here with your fixed air there. So it's you're putting out ideas into the universe and you're looking for emotions that come back on your relationship side in a very straight way uh, and, and your financial side in a very straight way. And that's just the plain and simple elements that are running through your, uh, through your sign. Obviously, each petal has its own um, significance and the top petal in particular is this sort of interaction with the world around you. Now, what you'll see underneath there is obviously you have that crossing fire there and that crossing air, um, which is just below that sort of petal 10. Now, obviously, fire and air go really well together. 
And when air goes through fire, it produces water, which gives you that fixed constant of emotional sort of state that most people will not recognize the changes of emotional state within you uh, when looking from the outside in, as it were, towards Scorpio. So, uh, you know, it's that is a big driver of your life, as it were, that passion with ideas. You like to be stimulated in multitudes of different ways. And that passion can wax and wane according to what you're doing. Now, this is where we're going to come into the monthly readings. So that's just a basic idea, a quick overview of your sign and the elements that are in your sign. Now we're going to bring in um, the influence from Taurus, because we are in the Taurus season. And now we're going to bring in the influence of Taurus. Now for you, and particularly for all water signs in the time of Taurus, when you put water and earth together, you end up with very fertile land. It's the most ideal thing. The only thing you're really missing is that fire. And we can now bring up Taurus. I'm sorry, it's a little bit I've got to redo the designs a little bit because on this side here, on your mutable side, it's difficult to sort of see. You've obviously got your fire that comes in from um, uh, from Sagittarius, but in Taurus, it has Gemini coming in in this section here, but Gemini is air, so air and fire. It works very well. And with the cardinal side, your cardinal air, you have cardinal fire coming in through Taurus um from Aries. So this actually plays incredibly well uh in the undercurrents that's just below the surface of life, you know, as you work through conversations that are within you. It should be a very stimulating time. And as I said, it is your opposite sign and you go very well with it. Because if you look on the outside, obviously you have fixed uh water with fixed earth. The um, corresponding, um, uh, uh, what they called, uh, not elements, they are uh, like cardinals, fixed and mutables. You're, I know you're screaming at it. I know you're telling me. And it is, um, it, yes, that's what it is. I can't think of the name. Blimey, it's amazing. I think this is what age is all about. We forget words, don't we? It's obviously I've not haven't got my my air running through me at the moment. So obviously uh, the cardinal fixed and uh, mutables tend to go really well together when you're playing with the opposite sign. As it were, I just can't get over that. What is it? Blimey! You know it's uh, elements and qualities. I've got it. Quality, not quantity. That's the question. Blimey. Don't get old, people. Don't get old. <laughs> anyway, all your qualities go well together with uh, Taurus. So uh, with this cardinal, with this cardinal air and fire that's coming through you, because you've got two pure signs upon each other. So it is a really very constant um, passion that's stimulating your ideas at the moment. And that fire, that passion that's coming in from the outside world, and you're now sort of projecting your ideas of how to play with that passion in a really good way. We'll go back to the earth and water. So you have this earth from uh, Taurus at the top, and at the base of Taurus, you have fire, which goes really well with your air. Again, it's a similar sort of thing here. You have um, your fixed earth with fixed water, air and fire. Um, Earth and uh, earth and uh, water uh, going up here, uh, and this is where you get your um, uh, air and fire as well going totally through this section here. It all works really well. So basically, in the month of Taurus, even if you did not do a thing, even if you just didn't actually consciously engage in life, it would flow on nicely. You wouldn't get that many bumps in the road. But obviously, when it's flowing nicely, there's no reason why you can't push it. And this is a question of what you want to achieve in your life. And this is where the Astro Flyer becomes an amazing tool that you can use almost on a daily basis uh, to 
work out what aspects of your life you really need to push or invest in or not to push and not to invest in in order to get the best results because that's what the astro flower is all about after 20 odd years of doing healing seeing 20 odd thousand people in my healing sessions it, I, I tried to work a tool that i could give to my clients and say you know as you go forward to stop you from coming to see me so much um, the better is is prevention rather than cure and when you engage in life in a certain way all of a sudden you become a lot more healthier obviously there is also down to sort of uh, physical activity and what you eat and etc but uh, essentially how you deal with or um, yeah you deal with the stress in life that's the most important thing so at the moment here, and I, we've been seeing it in your readings, there's a lot of possibilities that come to the surface here. And it all depends on you engaging in life. Uh, that's the main thing about it. Uh, once you, as I said, you know, if you don't do anything in the month of Taurus, well, it's probably going to bumble along quite nicely. Um, you won't have a lot of surprises, uh, which sometimes can be quite nice for... For Sagittarius, uh, for um, Scorpio, because you can then deal with life in a in a in a in a very sort of administrative sort of way and get things done uh, for you, and that's what makes that earth and that water very very productive on your surface. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull a few cards and we're going to actually start engaging with the elements within that sort of reading. So, yes, without further ado. Welcome to the Astro Flower. Let's just see what's going on with you. Overall energy is here. I still can't get over that quality thing. It's it's tickling me down here and trying to make me laugh the whole time. It's terrible. So um, yeah, let's get on with the overall energies. Karmic message. This is your central message on your relationship side. These are the things that we need to confront. Now, someone asked me about karma in the comment section. I will be answering questions on live once the studio is finally set up uh, on Cymatic TV concerning those sort of things um, to give a uh, quality and uh, to quantify what karma is uh, and then work out how we actually engage with it and how it actually affects us. So this is the karmic path for your relationship side. This is the karmic path for your financial side. It's influence in the universe, influence from your past self, influence from your future self, and the general outcome okay so let's just see what's going on for you here hangman this is the overall energy as i said if you don't engage anything you know you're going to bumble along quite nicely but also if you imagine it's a little bit like sitting on a train i love going on trains um i, I wish i could do a lot more on trains um, but it's beautiful because you can see the countryside, you're relaxed, you don't have to worry about where you're going because the tracks, you just follow them. And that's what it seems like here. It's what it's doing is in, in this three week period, the overall energy which is around you, and it is really quite beautiful because you have this earthen uh, water at the base on both sides. So it's a very fertile base which then leads into fire and air at the top. You've got all the elements going on in the very center of you. And this is, can be, this is very much a magician card as well, sort of scenario within your overall energies. And this is where you can see things in a different light. And this is what the overall energies are trying to help you to do. So I'd be patient about life, patient about where you're going and etc. But certainly observe things to see the greater picture. On your relationship side, and it could, if you know, if you're with a Taurus, there should things should be really working well. On your karmic message here, it's to seize an opportunity in the physical sense uh, in regards to relationships and connections with other people that are around you. There seems to be an opportunity that is on your karmic path. It's almost like an obligation for you to take this opportunity or to refuse it. There is not an obligation to take it. There's an obligation to actually engage with it more than anything else. But I think this is a beautiful opportunity for you. It's a start of something new, and it could be an activity. Uh, it could be uh, like a pastime. It could be physically going out with someone, you know, someone asking you to, you know, go to the cinema. It's that physical engagement that really sort of helps you out. Beautiful scenario. 
And from the universe here, which is really nice because you've got um, uh, the um, uh, fire and air on the exterior, and you've got the um, uh, water and earth on your interior. Uh, here, I think the universe here is is trying to play more towards the emotions. They're looking for the deep within you here. And it's sort of saying here, there is one path to follow. There's only one cup giving you that beautiful water or giving, there's only one cup giving you that beautiful energy. And I think that's tied into that sort of ace of, uh, ace of, um, ace of pentacles at the base there. The universe here is really trying to sort of saying, look, there's the obvious path. As I said, it's an, almost like an obligation that you need to go through. And I think the universe and coincidences around you will stop you from deviating a little bit like being on a train, stop you from deviating from the tracks of where you should be going. From your past to your future, look at this. You have earth and air there, earth and water there, earth and water there, earth and water there. And then you have that fire and air coming from there. So it's incredibly fertile. So obviously any difficulty that you might have been going through in the past season, which would have been um, Aries, which may have been a little bit more sort of um, trying for you than anything else. Um, you've come through this difficulty now, and this is where your past is. Once you've confronted that difficulty, you're allowing that fire and air, those passionate ideas to come to the fore and connect with what you've been through in order to recognize the happiness that you're going towards within that situation. And it's sort of saying that situation there can be very, very fortuitous and happy for you. What's the general outcome? Uh, the, the future self, sorry. You've got temperance. As I said here, you've got to be a little bit patient, observe, observing of what's going on around you. I think there's a certain degree of that for the next sort of three weeks. And I think it's saying here, because this is about your future self, you can turn negative into positives. And I think this ties possibly into there. It's a natural progression. As you convert negative into po into into the into positives, um, this you know this temperance card in the future is sort of saying you know from observing things in a different sort of way, you have the opportunity to really get the best out of that. It's very very fertile. She's got one hand, one foot in the water and one foot on the land, and this is where it's playing into this section here. So it's being. I would say more sort of being very patient with the outside world rather than being patient with yourself. Um, uh, with yourself, I would get on. But for this here, and this is that converting negative into positive, getting on, and be, but being patient with the outside world. Planting a seed, you're not, it's not going to germinate the next day. That's the sort of scenario here. And the general outcome here is the Knight of Wands. This ties in what's going on underneath you. I think there's a burning desire for you to engage in the world around you, maybe even to get into a relationship. And this is what this could well be uh, this month here or this period here for up to the Gemini season. You've got that opportunity that's arising within you and therefore you can get on your horse and you can really start driving your passions. And it seems to be coming in from you. And whatever you do, it seems like it's going to be very fertile and productive. So you're going off on a mission to confirm or to confront this opportunity or engage in this opportunity that's coming into your life in regards to your relationships. On your financial side, on your karmic path, look at this, two aces. This is you moving into your summer period as well, it's got to be said. Um, so this is when you're personal energy is also taking a much more higher level um, so your petals your flowers are going to be playing a lot more on than on Taurus than Taurus is going to be playing on you at the moment but look at that as a as a sort of base for your path for the next three weeks absolutely beautiful this ties in beautiful for your relationships or even in a very physical way this here is tying into um, sort of your crowning glory, your victories. It, you've got to you've got to put yourself forward in this calm time of your energies. Put yourself forward will bring you the results. It will also give you a clarity of vision about where you're going. It will cut through the mist, uh, and and so you can see your path to your crowning glory. And it's also where you've got that war, that air and fire there. It's really pushing out here. And then after that, like on this side here, 
you've got that productivity between earth and water, earth and water, earth and water. And, and this is what's coming from you. So you're almost sort of um, provoking, that's the word I'm looking for, provoking this ace of swords, provoking this opportunity. If I was you, it's on your karmic path to provoke this um, opportunity, promotion, job promotion, getting a new job, starting a business or taking your business to a next level, starting your project or really exploring your product, uh, project, project in an amazing way. My, oh my giddy up. From the universe here, and it, this is it. So you're pushing out on your karmic path with this ace of, ace of, um, ace of swords onto that fire and air. But also on the fire and air, on your um, on your in connection with the universe, you've also got the ace of wands. Out with the old and in with the new. Look at that. Triple aces all the way, people. Absolutely blinding. That is the base. This is where you're starting from. And it is phenomenal. I think this is um, finally in this period here, because it's calm, all the pieces are coming together, out with the old and in with the new. And with all those pieces coming together, you could really push your, your boundaries in regards to job, business, and, and uh, projects, certainly on that side. On your relationship side, it also bodes incredibly well. Um, but it, on your financial side, is absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> this is the influence on your past self. As I said before, you've got all that earth and uh, water, very fertile land. With that air and fire that's coming for you, you're provoking a situation. You're, you've been provoking maybe, and you've been looking for a job or a promotion or looking to start your business. Um, you've done that work. You should have made, or you should have the elements around you or you should have the plan that you can put into place which combines with the outside world which brings in those results it's a real celebration going into a new paradigm and it ties nicely with that uh, 10 of cups on the far side on the top left you get the moon your future you're going into this is you this is you right the moon card up here uh, fire and air on this side, earth and water on that side. There's a lot of fire and, you know, the combinations are absolutely fantastic for Scorpio during this period here. If you're trying to do anything, really go for it. Obviously, we can take into account the planets, but we're not going to go that far yet. I will be doing workshops, um, online workshops for the Astro Flower, where we will be introducing the planets into the system. But this is very sort of surface level sort of stuff. Um, so. Your future self is you being you. And I think you're going to be quite surprised by the result of this opportunity that's coming in for you. Absolutely uh, brilliant. It really makes you feel empowered as well. And if you look at these three cards here, you've got the hangman, the temperance, and the moon. They're not really going anywhere fast. Um, and this is within you. So basically, you should be a lot calmer within yourself. And that's going to allow you to go a lot faster on the exterior because that's how energy works. It's all about opposites, harmonies, uh, inverting or points of inversion between interior and exterior. And from the interior, as it goes to the exterior, is seems to be very, very um, clear. It's pretty, This is all about being you. This is all about being you. Putting this is your future self, trying telling you to be you. And then you get the six of pentacles for the how you interact with other people. You're putting yourself. You, you should be putting yourself first. It's not a nasty thing to do. It's not egotistical. Yeah, we do get things wrong from time to time, and I know you don't like that. You like this orderly factor going on when things are very clear for you, and like most people but particularly for sort of Scorpio. And here, the moment it starts working for you, then therefore it can work for other people that are around you. And that is also what you love. When it starts working for you, you love to share it around with the people that you trust, the people that you have a lot of respect for. Uh, and this is what it's saying here with your overall interaction with the outside world. Just make sure you put yourself first because that is what you should be provoking.
that's what's going to come through with you and it will see we'll be able to see that in uh, the gemini season so let's just go on with a bit of clarification on the light seers card shall we see what's going on here strength card uh with the hangman yes i think observing within you how you feel about a situation um and what things um you know, it's like, I know if I get myself a cup of tea and a nice Victoria sponge cake, I'm going to be as happy as anything. And sit me in the corner, I'll be lovely. A bit of bird song and I'll be fine. You know, once I know that, I know it's going to provoke a sensation within me. I know it's going to relieve me of a certain amount of stress. Therefore, I know what I need to do in order to get the results. And this is where I think you need to do a little bit of an experiment with yourself, start pushing the boundaries a little bit, and we see this on your karmic path here particularly, um, start pushing the boundaries just to sort of see how you can develop that, um, that sort of notion of creating that still and oneness from within. So as it goes from within, it will go outwards and it will make your life a lot more sort of, a uh, lot more sort of profitable, a lot more sort of enjoyable, a lot, le a lot less stress within your life. Uh, a lot less stress of engaging with other people. You'll feel those triggers very early, uh, and then you can walk away from those sort of things. Hmm. Yeah, there is a bit of a leap of faith, I think, here. And I think that's why you're being backed by the um, the universe, sort of saying there is only one path to follow. I think here, with this opportunity, this physical engagement with other people, it is a bit of a leap of faith. Um, it's not your strongest point, the leap of faith, um, Scorpio. Uh, um, as I said, like most sort of fixed signs, to be honest. Um, but you, I think you're going to recognize that if you do apply this patient with the outside world, this leap of faith will actually be very, very passionate, very enjoyable, very sociable. And I think this is the more you encourage it, the more it will exist. So when you have difficult times, that will help you through the difficult times so it will be less difficult in the future. Yeah. The universe here, the evident path, this is the uh, you know, sort of guiding factor that's coming in. It's giving you a focal point um, for your future. And that's what that one cup is all about. I would really only invest in things that are making you feel good. And I think that's what the Ten of Cups is all about. And that's what that beginning thing is there. So if it feels good for you, yes, it might be a case of taking a leap of faith and asking someone if they want to go to the cinema rather than waiting for them to ask you sort of scenario they can only say no and that's going to be great okay no fine would it move on but, but until it's clear you're not going to know and that stress there is the unknowing is not good for you yeah you know happiness after difficulty ten of swords that go along with it um we can see that with the with this here i think that you've changed in your own destiny you're taking control of your emotional experience in life uh, and cutting things out that don't really work for you more than anything else. And just recognizing it is going to make you feel a lot more elated in life. With the temperance card, you get the nine of cups. I think this ties into there what the universe is trying to tell you with all that communication as well, giving you that focal point, giving you that sort of uh, fire that's understanding with knowledge. Um, here, with that temperance here, with those two cups there, being in alignment with yourself, you're going to realize that there's so much to offer in your life. Once you follow that one cup, once you take that one cup away from that ten of cups, you're going to realize all those beautiful offerings that is within your life around you. Let's see what's with the knight of wands. Knight of wands, eight of, of um, swords. I think this is more of a sort of like telling you of where you've been, sort of almost sort of saying, you know, you look back over your shoulder and you kind of go, yeah, oh, that was really difficult. I was really stuck. I had problems. Couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I didn't seem to be in alignment with other people. Everything I seemed to do, no one seemed to like and what have you. Uh, you know, this is now freeing you up and you're letting go of that. And I think that's what ties in with that um, Ten of Swords. I think you've already done that in the past. And I think you're realizing during this three week period, if you really engage with your passions, you are realizing that you're freeing yourself up from this whole sort of scenario. It's really beautiful. Uh, let's just see what's going on. Um, that's your engagement with the world around you. Do not be stuck. Do not be rigid. 
start pushing it a little bit you do you risk very little during this period it will be very good for you oh we've got two cards here six of pentacles absolutely brilliant so this is for the ace of swords six of pentacles which is also at the top there so you it's almost as sort of saying to you uh if you go after this crowning glory within your career business or projects you will get it if you put yourself first and then you get the seven of wands and that is the number seven is a realization it's a revelation number um and that's telling you there to be strong to be you to be um to be you too totally once you start doing that that's when you're going to find that strength within you to actually you know seize that opportunity that you seem to be creating more than anything else with the ace of wands out with the old and in with the new you've got to play with this passion as i said here you don't risk a lot just be um, the universe here with coincidences around you you may have opportunities that turn up a little bit out of the blue which would be quite nice because it'd be this but i do believe they're good things it's going to help you to play with the passions in the world that is around you um and it, within the security of that confirmation that you know that you you know you can get that job or you've got that job or you're getting that promotion you're working towards your crown and glory i think that's what's going to provide a lot of security for you you get the seven of cups again this is from your past self this is where you've combined yourself either with a company or another person or a situation or even just combining it with yourself and actually sort of saying yes i'm going to go after this aspect of my life and this is where you're there's only one cup as i said giving you the good stuff and that's what your past self is sort of saying it's no point going over dead wood just let it be and just move on um and be you and this is i think it's a real liberating moment for you what i get out of this you being you so there's a lot of surprises that come up here that you're gonna to have to make choices about uh, they can be quite difficult at times but at the same time um you're not going to please everyone and i think you probably understand that um and if you understand that it's going to make these choices here if you do it in accordance to yourself very simple and all of a sudden the two of swords when you make that choice you become the leader of your destiny you this is where you can really instigate that ace of swords there by putting yourself first i think it's really important and it's not in an egotistical way you know you're not putting yourself forward in order to walk on other people you know that's that's not your intention at all but if there's only one job and there's three people going for it only one person can get it and why not you scorpio that's the thing put yourself for for make that choice now that is the six of uh, pentacles so that comes in with that earth and excuse me that earth and uh, uh water at the surface putting yourself first in the world around you but then you get the queen of swords at the bottom and that is you taking a direction and that is that air and fire at, that is driving behind it you are taking a direction she's not facing straight ahead she's facing outward uh here as you look at it like this but it's also facing inwards once you put it in here it's bringing the stuff into your life it's bringing in that crowning glory to you and she has a control over her emotions uh, more than anything else because she's putting herself first and exploring those passions in life so there you go scorpio did you did you enjoy that i hope you did leave please leave i know i love your comments by the way all the comments i reply to every single one of them personally um obviously if i end up sort of like with thousands and thousands of comments it might become a little bit more sort of difficult and you know if you thank me i might just put a heart there just to sort of say thank you very much um you know but if you want to ask questions you're more than welcome to ask questions we will be addressing that on either if it's about energy on somatic tv our sister channel or we will be doing a memberships um by the end of this summer for the astro flower where we can discuss through um evenings of lives where you can ask questions and so forth so yeah you any sort of interaction any sort of um way in which you get engaged in the astro flower family is absolutely beautiful and i you know i hope you get the best out of these readings because when 
everybody's living to their best example, then the world's going to be a great place. You know, it's going to be a great place for my kids, my dog, for me, uh, you know, for the birds, for the trees, for the whales, for everybody. It's going to be great. So there you go. Uh, yes. So, yes, thank you very much. Don't forget about qualities. Okay. In the meantime, life should be fun. So please do enjoy.